Personal notice. Dangers by stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. As a motorist, you know that the job of a motor oil is to lubricate and protect your car's engine, so you'll be interested in this. New RPM doubles engine life. Yes, compared with premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM motor oil doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. More than meets heavy-duty requirements of all car manufacturers. Get new RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Destination Danger, another adventure of George Valentine. Senor Valentine, you ask for danger, I have it for you. If you succeed in my assignment, you will be doing a service to many people. If you do not, it is quite possible that your services will be at an end permanently. In the briefcase that was delivered with this note, you will find sufficient cash to cover your fee and expenses, tickets for yourself and your assistant on the Pan American Clipper leaving for Panama at 11 o'clock tonight, and some unimportant oh, papers. When you, when you arrive, arrive in, in Panama, Panama you, you will find, find that rooms have been reserved for you at the Hotel Tivoli in Ancon, and... George, we're going to Panama! Wait a minute, Brooksy, wait a minute. This sounds like a gag. Let's see what's in this briefcase. I suppose you didn't notice your initials are on it. In gold. GV. Yeah, yeah, sure, I noticed that. It's a practical joke. It's... Huh? Well, darling, what is it? Oh, with all this cash, it'd be an expensive practical joke. Ought to take care of Ali Khan's traveling expenses for a week. And here are the tickets. To Cuman Airport, Panama, via Mexico City. Yeah. A letter of introduction to a Captain Santos Silvera. No address. Wait a minute, another note. Senor Valentine. The papers you will carry in this case mean nothing. They are only to make you appear as a traveling businessman from the States. Please destroy both this note and the first. A young man at the Tivoli will give you complete instructions. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. Until we meet again. Yeah, bad choice of words. Up to now, my so-called client and I haven't met. George, you mean you're not going to do it? Well, now, did I say that? Sure I am. we got to find some way to spend all this, Mulder. Yeah, you better run home and get packed, Angel. I'll pick you up on the way to the airport. George. Yeah, Brooksy. You don't even know what we're supposed to do in Panama, do you? Uh-uh. Just relax. We need a vacation anyway. Where'd you put the briefcase? Mm, the fancy prop? Under the seat. The letter of introductions in my pocket here. Oh. Darling, when the man wrote about danger... Senorita. What... Uh, yes? Pardon for the intrusion, but do you play canasta? Canasta? Well, of course. Well, then would you care to join two others and me in a game? Unless, of course, you wish to rest. Well, no, I'm not sleepy, but I oh, think... Oh, go I... ahead, Angel. Have some fun. She's quite a canasta player, young lady. You better watch it. Oh, that is fine. Come, it is a few seats ahead. All right. I'll be back in a little while, George. Okay. I'll read the paper and get a fresh cup of coffee from the stewardess. Good luck. Uh, thanks. Uh, say you? Hmm? Oh, hello. I hear you say you like another cup of coffee. The stewardess brings some to me. I do not wish it. Uh, may I offer it to you? Oh, I, sure, thanks. Oh, not at all. Here you are. Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, won't you sit down over here? Gracias. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Manuel Perez. And you? Valentine, George Valentine. Ah. This is your first trip in the Clipper, Senore? Yeah, that's right. You're mm. bound for South America? No, no, just Panama. Ah. Traveling for pleasure, sir? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, no, not exactly. Pleasure and business, you might say. Oh, that is nice. Together, business and pleasure. You are not, uh, not drinking your coffee, senor? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. They serve good coffee on these plains, don't they? Muy bueno, muy. I've traveled this land many times. I always have found the food excellent. Oh, but perhaps you wish to read your paper, senor. No, no, no. Rather chat. Mm, good coffee. You, uh, you're going to South America? No, no. I, too, am going to Panama. Oh, but uh, when the stewardess took the information, I uh, <laughs> thought you said See, that... See, South America eventually, but uh, I'm making a short stop in Panama also. Oh. Like yourself, I am a businessman. I have many interests. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't think I was sleepy. It was sleepy. the steady drone of the plane, senor. Yeah, I guess so. Well, take a little sleep. we we'll continue our talk later, eh? Mm. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's, that's right. Thanks for the coffee. Thanks for that. George. Hmm. George, wake what? up. What? What? Oh, it's you, Roxy. We're almost in Mexico City, darling. That's where we make connections for Panama. Oh, yeah. yeah I guess I fell asleep. And you weren't sleeping. I was, but... Hey, wait a minute. George, what's the matter? That letter of introduction I had in my pocket, it's gone. Oh, how could it be? Hey, the briefcase still down there under the seat? Well, wait a minute, now look. Yes, George, it's right where you put it. Hey, I didn't just fall asleep, I, I was drugged. Yeah, it was in the coffee, that guy across the aisle. Hey, where is he? George, you're not even awake yet. Oh, yes, I am. Somebody took that letter out of my pocket while I was asleep. You must have put it somewhere else, darling. Why would anybody want it? It was in this pocket and it's gone. It was that character across the aisle. I'll call the stewardess and have a reporter before we land in Mexico City. Well, she's up ahead. I'll call her, George. Ah, Senor Valentine, you are awake now, eh? You had a long sleep. Oh, there you are, Perez. Yeah, yeah, I did. And maybe it was somebody else's idea. What? What do you mean, Senor? Something is wrong? Uh, something is missing. Stewardess? Well, perhaps I may help you to find it. What is lost? In case you didn't know, a letter from the inside pocket of my jacket. Oh, Senor, it must have fallen out of the pocket while you were sleeping, you know? Uh, uh, would you mind to stand up? Oh, no. But that won't do any good. Ah, see... there. There, you see? Is this the letter, senor? Oh, George, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, all right. But how did it get stuffed down beside the cushion? Strange things happen when one is asleep, senor. You must have done it in a dream. Well, I'm so glad you have lost nothing. We will meet again, no doubt, in Panama. Yes. Thank you, senor. Thank you for nothing. I think he took that letter out of my pocket, looked at it while I was out, and stuffed it down there. But, George, he's so nice, so polite. Yeah, sure. So is Joe Stalin, probably. Now, listen, Angel. Somebody knows more about why we're going to Panama than we do. And when we get there, we'd better have eyes in the back of our heads. Fasten your seatbelts, please. Everybody fasten your seatbelts. Oh, Brooksy, I don't get it. Don't get what, George? Well, it looks like a typical manana routine. Our plane got in at nine last night. That's right. The letter from our unknown client seemed urgent enough. We've been hanging around this hotel all day and still no young man to give us instructions. Eh, por favor, senor Valentine. Yeah? Eh, I hear what you're saying and I do not blame you for being impatient. But the time is not yet ready. Oh, who are you? I am the young man who is to direct you. Eh, my name is Carlos, senor. Well, it's about time you showed up, Carlos. Now, would you mind telling me what this is all about? I'm so sorry, senor. At this moment, I cannot tell you. But uh, soon, you will know everything. But, Carlos, can't you tell us what we're supposed to do? We've been here almost 24 hours. As I know... said, senorita, the time is just not yet. Uh, tomorrow, I think I can take you to the man. Man? Would his name happen to be Captain Santos Silvera? <laughs> Senor, again, you ask a question which I cannot answer. Uh, believe me, I will have word to you as soon as possible. And where to stay around the Tivoli here until you have it, huh? Oh, no, senor, no. Tonight you are free. You may do just as you like. Uh, you would perhaps like to see the nightlife in Panama City? Oh, well, that'd be fun. Well, then I would suggest the Ritz. Uh, there is entertainment, music, fine tropical... Yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay, Carlos. Uh, tomorrow I will see you again. You mean here in the lobby? Uh, no, senor. 
I will know where you are. Your rooms are 212 and 213. Well, you just know everything, don't you, Buster? <laughs> it was I who made the reservation. Uh, please, senor, to be patient. Eh? Tomorrow I think your job can be done, and then you may go back to the States as soon as you wish. Hasta mañana. Well, we're still in the dark. Yeah. But we know our services aren't needed tonight, at least. So, let's go to our rooms and change, and then see a little of Panama. Two twelve. There's your room, Brooksy. Don't be too long putting on your face. No, I won't. Knock when you're ready. Yeah, sure. Okay, Angel. I've been in a lot of rat races, but... The... Well, what are you doing oh. here? Oh, senor. Also, what are you doing with my briefcase? I don't quite remember inviting you to my room. It is all a mistake, senor. I can explain to you everything. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you the girl who asked Miss Brooks to play can canasta on the plane last night? See, si, see, si, senor Valentine. <laughs> Looks like I'm getting famous. Everybody knows my name. But the senorita Brooks has told it to me last night. Oh, I see. Well, that explains one thing. But not why you're here in my room. Well, I've told you, senor, it is a mistake. I think I'm coming to my own room, but when I come in, I find a man's clothes. I think maybe they make a mistake. Uh-huh. Well, they didn't. Uh, just what is the number of your room? Well, it is 214, this room. 214. You got a near miss, sister. This is 213. That would make you my next-door neighbor, that way. Oh, oh I, am, I am so sorry. Yeah, Sure. And would you mind handing over that briefcase before you go? Oh, oh see, I was only trying to find out who they had put in my room. Yeah, I understand. I am sorry, senor. Please, please forgive me. Yeah, sure. That character dreams up a good story. I better get Brooksy. Yes, George? Yeah, Angel. Come on in, I'm almost ready. Hey, look, Brooksy, I'm going to take this briefcase down and leave it at the desk for safekeeping while we're out. Meet you in the lobby. That briefcase? Why? George has nothing in it but those silly catalogs. They don't mean anything. Yeah, that's what the man wrote, all right. But I wonder if he was telling the truth. But we looked at the stuff. Just brochures. Angel, on this trip, I've decided that anything can mean something, and I'm just going to play it safe. Come on down when you're ready, and we'll have a look at this place called the Ritz. <laughs> I think this place is cute, George. Yeah, yeah, it is, Angel. <laughs> Darling. Yeah, Brooksy. You're not even here. You're still thinking about that girl in your briefcase. Ah, oh, you're so right. But why? She made a perfectly understandable mistake getting in the wrong room. I'd have picked up the briefcase myself just to Sure, see sure, I know. What bothers me is that it all fits into a pattern. Oh, what kind of a pattern? Well, don't you get it, Angel? On the plane, this gal asks you to play canasta, gets you out of the way. The guy across the aisle gives me some doped coffee, picks my pocket for a letter, and... Oh, don't you think you're dreaming a little, darling? I'm afraid I don't. But it could have been just a coincidence. I don't think the girl and the man had anything to do with each other. And that letter could have dropped out of your pocket, and the girl of your... Oh! 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 No shot! Take it easy, Angel. There's one of those Panama policemen over there in the door. It's all over now, I guess. Who, Who were they shooting at, George? I can't say for sure, but look at my drink. Your glass, darling, it's broken. Yeah, somebody was a pretty good shot, but not good enough. Somebody was trying to shoot you. Looks that way. Senor Valentine, Senor, I saw what happened to your glass. That was very close. Wow, Senor Perez. Coincidence that you're here, huh? <laughs> Came in to offer me another cup of coffee, I suppose. But those shots, they, they must have been aimed at you. I got that idea myself. Well, if there is anything I can do, perhaps see you to your hotel. Oh, no, no, thanks, just the same. You see, my friend, I've been doing a little adding up. And I can't seem to get you out of the total. George, let's what? go back to the hotel. Sure. Only I think we'll get that cop over there for an escort. Somebody's looking for my hide, Brooksy. And I'd like to know who it is. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. 
Last Saturday afternoon, my neighbor Whitey and I were driving home from a football game. Whitey had been rooting for one team, and I was sort of cheering for the other. So as we drove along, we were arguing the game and the talents of some of the players. But you know, the thing that impressed me most was the teamwork. It reminded me of the way that car savers work as a team to take better care of your car. For instance, when it comes to lubrication service, car savers are a smoothly balanced combination. Car savers know where and how much to lubricate. They have factory-approved specifications to guide them, and they have a complete line of the very best petroleum products with which to do the job. And when they're through, car savers sweep out your car and shine up the windows till they sparkle like an all-American. Even Whitey had to agree with me that a team like Car Saver Service and Standard Oil Products is a tough one to beat. No matter where you drive in the West, you'll find the Car Saver team ready and waiting to serve you. Once you get a sample of real Car Saver Service, you'll know why so many Western motorists root for the folks at Standard Stations or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. <laughs> Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're sent off to Panama on a mysterious errand by an equally mysterious client who indicates that the job may have its dangers. Now, after being apparently drugged on the plane and definitely shot at in a nightclub, you're inclined to believe he was right. And still you've had no further instructions. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you decide to play it safe by staying close to your room until someone makes the next move. So, back at the Tivoli. Well, Angel, try and get some sleep, huh? See you in the morning. I'll try. Uh, George, hmm? let me take the briefcase tonight. This? Why? Because somebody apparently wants it. And they'd naturally expect you to have it. Well, so? It may be more important than we think, darling. So, if you don't have it in your room, they can't get it, can they? Well... No. All right, then. Give it to me. I'll hide it in my room until we know what to do with it. Yeah, okay. But uh, be sure and lock your door tonight, huh, Angel? I don't want you in any danger. Here we are. I'll be careful. Lock your door, too. <laughs> sure. Night, Brooksy. Well. Oh, Senor Valenta. I see I'm holding open house again. Oh, I, I'm glad that you come back. Yeah. What are you doing here in my room at this time of night, Carlos? Well, uh, you see, I had to see you quickly, senor. Uh, the plans are changed. I, I told you the man could not see you until tomorrow. Sure, I know. Uh, but now he wished to see you right away, tonight. Uh-huh. Well, have him come up to my room. Oh, no, no, senor. He cannot be seen on the streets of Panama. Uh, you must go to him. Now, do you know the waterfront? No, but I guess I can find it with your help. Oh, but I cannot go with you. Uh, you are to be alone, so there will be n no suspicion. Yeah? <laughs> Sounds fascinating. Where do I go? Now, look, senor. There is a freight ship, the Cortez. It's docked at the foot of Calla Ruiz. Now, you are to go aboard and meet the captain. Calla Ruiz, huh? And that would be Captain Silvera. Si, 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 senor. Be sure that you take the credentials that you have brought with you. Uh, that is all you need to know. Uh-huh. All right, Carlos. I'll get right down there. You see, I will be down in the lobby to see you when you come back. Eh? I hope that you have no trouble on the way there, Senor Valentine. Yeah, I hope so myself. I've had enough for one night. You see, adios, Senor. I'd rather say hasta la vista. <laughs> Says Cortez. Here she is. Well, it's dark aboard. I wonder if. Who is it? Huh? Well, where are you? I can't see in the dark. Call out your name. The name's Valentine. Are you Captain Silvera? Uh, well, Senor Valentine. We meet again. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. You're that guy from the plane. You're Perez. That is right, Senor. Now, what are you doing here? You asked for Captain Silvera. I am his friend. Very old friend. I came aboard to stay with him tonight. Oh, yeah? See, the captain is not feeling well. He asked me to get from you some uh, papers he is expecting. Uh-huh. 
Now, look, Perez, I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. On the plane, you tried to pick my pocket after you drug my oh, coffee. Oh, now... Senor, please, that is all in your imagination. <laughs> I put nothing in your coffee. All I did did not search your pocket. I am your friend, and the friend of the captain. You make it sound all very simple. But it is. Now, uh, where is the, the, the briefcase? I didn't bring it. Oh, you didn't bring it? No. No, I left it at the hotel for safekeeping. All I brought was a letter of introduction to the captain. That was quite unnecessary. But he will be very upset if he knows you did not bring the case. Well, now, that's just too bad. Look, Perez, I'll talk this over with Captain Silvera myself. Where's his cabin? I have told you he is ill. He does not wish to see you. So you will do as I say. I will, huh? See, si, see. Si. You will return to your hotel and get the case and bring it back here immediately. Uh-huh. If you do not, you, you are quite apt to cause trouble. It must be here tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, Perez. I'll have the briefcase back here in half an hour. Brooksy, Brooksy, wake up. Come on, put on a robe. Get up. George, you're all right. You're safe. Oh, sure, I'm all right, but hey, you're all dressed. What's the idea? I had a visitor, Maria, the girl in the room next to yours. The one I found snooping in my room? What'd she want? Well, she was worried about you. She knocked on your door, and when there wasn't any answer, she came to mine. Oh, I'm sure she was worried about me. Oh, we had her figured wrong, darling. She's our friend. Oh, yeah? She didn't happen to get out with that briefcase, did she? Of course not. It's under my other pillow. Good. All right, let's see it. There's something darn important about that case. And it isn't just the brochures and catalogs that are in it. Well, what else could there be? Here. Good, thanks. Have a look. Maybe we can find out. You've looked through it before, George, and you couldn't find anything then. Uh, well, maybe I didn't look very well. Nothing on that side. Nothing at the bottom. Yeah. What? Hidden flap down here at the bottom of this section, Brooksy. Darling, there are some papers in there. Yeah, I'll see. Now maybe we'll find out... What? All those... Oh, George, what is it? Wow. No wonder a lot of people wanted to get their hands on this thing. You still haven't told me. Angel, right here is a very neat blueprint for a revolution, complete with details. You mean we've been mixed up with somebody who's trying to overthrow the government? Not here in Panama, Brooksy, a little South American country that... Hey, here, look at that. Well, hadn't we better just destroy it, George? Uh Uh-uh. These are plans for revolution, all right. But we're delivering them for the other side. Our mysterious client found out what they were up to in detail, and and he wants... All this is to warn the government of his country. Yeah, sure. Captain Silvera is to take this plan back to South America and nip a revolution in the bud. Well, then we'd better find him right away. Well, it's going to take a little doing. But I think I know how to manage it. Might put you in a little danger for a few minutes, but it's the only way. Well, that's all right. What are you going to do, George? Well, we're going to go down to the lobby and pick up Carlos. He said he'd be waiting there. Then he's going to drive us down to the waterfront, and you can get to work. Tell you how on the way down. This is as far as we should go, Senor Valentine. All right. All right. Now, there's the Cortez, Brooksy, right over there. Uh, Yes, I see it, George. You know exactly what you're to do? Go aboard and meet this Perez character. Tell him that your life has been threatened and you don't dare leave the hotel. That I have the briefcase in your room and you'll bring him to me. You got it? I've got it. Good. Good luck, Angel. See you back at the hotel in just a few minutes. Right. Don't waste any time. E, caray, the senorita is brave, senor. Oh, brother, she's scared stiff and I don't blame her. But I couldn't figure any other way to get Perez off that ship. Uh, She's going up the gangway now. Yeah, things ought to start happening. Valentine? Is that you? Senor Perez? Huh? Is Senor Perez there? Well, uh... What are you doing? Oh, Senor Perez. Si? Mr. Valentine sent me. Cross your fingers, Carlos. Cross my... What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Let's just hope Miss Brooks makes her story stick. Yes, see. It's very quiet up there in the day. Yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, come on, Brooksy. Come on. Sell him a bill of goods. Get him to get off. Senor, they are now. They're coming down the gangway, both of them. Yeah. Hey, it worked all right. Yeah, they're heading for that car parked over there. See, si, see, si, it's probably the car of this Perez. Eh? Yeah, yeah, it's his car, all right. Hey, there, they're in. Now get ready to run on that ship with me as soon as they're out of sight. See, si, see. Si. Now, Carl, let's run for it. Si. <coughs> Senor, what do we do when we get on the ship? Find Captain Silvera if he's still alive. You think maybe they have killed? I hope not, but I don't think he's just plain sick. Uh. 
Hey, here we are. Sign on the door, El Capitan. Captain! Captain Silvera! There's no answer, senor. No, we'd better get in there. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. They have tied him up. I'll say they have. Gag and all. All right, Carlos. Start untying those ropes while I get the gag. Yes, yes, senor. Hurry. Here we are. No. Captain Silvera. See, si. see, si, who are you? What you are going to do with me? Nothing, nothing, except get you out of here. My name is Valentine. Valentine? You are the man from the States. You are to bring... Some papers and a briefcase, yeah. But I'll have to turn them over to you without the case. Here. This is what you want. Ah, uh, gracias, gracias. I was afraid you might not get through with it. So was I for a while. Uh, there we are. The ropes are all loose now. Okay, good. Come on, oh. quickly now. And you better go with us, Captain. It'll be safer that way. Where we are going, Senor Valentine? I gotta catch up with a goon by the name of Perez before he starts to get rough. It is quite plain, Miss Brooks, that you and your friend have attempted to play a trick on me. But I I can't see why. George isn't here, but the briefcase you wanted is. You have it. I have it, see. But without everything it contained when you brought it to Panama. I I don't know what you mean. I think you do. The flap in this secret compartment was not tucked in again after the papers were removed. Where are they? Papers? What papers? Oh, you do not wish to tell me, huh? Very well. There are other ways... When the young man returns and finds that you are gone, he will no doubt wish that he... George! Easy, Brooksy. Take it easy. All right, Perez. Now it's my turn. What? What what do you mean? Why why do you... You put me to sleep once. I'll return the favor. Yeah, like this. Darling, you didn't have to... Oh, yes, I did. I aim to keep this guy out of Silvera's way until the ship has sailed. Hello, front desk. I want you to call the police and send them up to room 212. I just caught a man up here trying to kidnap one of the guests. Yeah, that other two. George, what happened to you after I came back here? Tell you later, Angel. Right now, I want to make plane reservations back to the good old USA. If you happen to know a motorist who wants to get better performance out of his car... Tell him to fill the tank with Chevron Supreme gasoline, the gas that gives all eight necessary high-performance qualities. Power, mileage, starting, warm-up, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, acceleration, and area blending. You'll be doing that motorist a favor, especially if that motorist is you, by recommending Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. Well, Angel, that's the story all wrapped up. And a nice piece of cash left over for the fee. You were wonderful, darling. Figuring out that Perez wasn't the captain's friend at all. Well, the way he talked to me on the ship did that. If he'd been on the right side of the fence, he would have taken me to Silvera. Well, it was exciting. Oh, Senor Valentine. Well, well, our friend Maria. Uh, Senor, before we left Panama, I have talked to my employer on the telephone. He is very happy that you have completed your assignment so well. Your employer? Who's he? The Senor who sent you on this case. You see, I came along too, just for the trip. (laughs) I can imagine. Well, I take back all my bad thoughts about you, Maria. Gracias. Miss Brooks, would you care to play a little game of canasta? Well, I... Oh, go ahead, Brooksy. Have fun. Me? I want to catch up on a little sleep. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Gene Bates was heard as Maria, Larry Dobkin as Manuel, Tony Barrett as Carlos, and Ted DeCorsia as the captain. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. 
Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.